Hello and a very good evening to you this Monday. I certainly hope you had a good day and started your week off well. Welcome to KTN Prime. Let's begin with the headlines. Well, uh, my chiefs, well, on attack rehabilitation, La Futa Kwanza, love to Tapeleka rehabilitation. Security officials sacked even as the government is sued over the crackdown on illicit brews. And two children burn to death in Kabarnet as their mother goes for a drinking spree. Plus, anti-corruption body seeks permission to access the accounts of the wealthy Nairobi county worker. And it's 10 years in jail for Nakuru Sheikh, convicted of trafficking a girl for sex tourism. Welcome to the program. I'm Nancy Kachingira. Maresha Oiti is our sign language interpreter. Now, the government has been sued over the ongoing crackdown on illicit brews and second generation liquor. The Attorney General, Inspector General of Police, Interior Cabinet Secretary, and Kabete MP Ferdinand Waititu are facing a lawsuit seeking compensation over the destruction of property and failure by the state to protect investments. The case was filed as a national alcohol. Beverage Association faulted the government in the crackdown. The final of the four-day crackdown on illicit brews and second-generation liquor. There was no let-up in such scenes as leaders, police and residents raided liquor-making and distribution premises. <laughs> This, despite Sunday's caution by President Uru Kenyatta against destruction of property, chaos and looting. In Thika, MP Alice Nganga led a raid on a container used to store ethanol. After the ethanol was poured, <laughs> the looting began. Looters made their way with the drums as security personnel just watched. With the destruction of factories and distribution outlets, many have been left counting losses. Others are not letting the government get away with it. The Association of Spirit Manufacturers has sued Attorney General Gidu Moigai, Inspector General of Police Joseph Boynet, Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Nkaiseri, and Kabete MP Ferdinand Waititu over the destruction of property in the crackdown. The association, through lawyer Kabugu Mutuku, moved to the High Court under certificate of urgency, arguing that the crackdown amounts to lawlessness and loss of massive investments under the watch of law enforcement agencies. The National Alcoholic Beverages Association, NABAC, which brings together, among others, London distillers, Kenya breweries, Kenya wine agencies, and Kiroche breweries, says the recent crackdown has led to the destruction of legitimate businesses. Legitimate businesses are losing an estimated Kenya shillings 100 million per day in lost sales, destroyed property and products. The association wants the government to publish all approved alcoholic brands and to arrest and prosecute anyone involved in destruction of property. So far we've not heard of anyone being taken to court because of destroying private property, which I think is a wrong message to send to investors. The association says the government may be employing the wrong tact. According to the association, effective anti-counterfeit measures and control of the importation, sale and distribution of raw spirit may be a good starting point. The main component uh, that is used to manufacture the spirits is, uh, is a spirit, is a raw spirit, which a lot of it is uh, an import product which comes not controlled, not regulated, and if it goes to the wrong hands, it leads to you know, the many cases that we hear of deaths uh, from that consumption. Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Kaiseri, who toured one of the destroyed factories in Naivasha and later addressed chiefs, is putting the police and chiefs who protect producers of illicit brews on notice. And there are several punishments. Moja unaasa kwa na nyumbani bila benefit. Pia unaasa kutoka na kupitia jela. So the choice is yours, my friends. In Mombasa, the caution was also to chiefs taking illicit brews. Where chief, you are drunkard, na unava uniform ya serikali, unaenda kubiri kwa baraza. Ni nani Kenya gani atasikiza mambo yako? 
in Nyeri, where area MP Esther Murugi led the crackdown, this chief turned up after missing three days of work. But it was not his lucky day, following accusations that he was not sober. He was interdicted. Twenty-two administrative security officials in Nyeri, Muranga and Kiambu have been fired for working in cahoots with illicit brewers. Rita Tinina, KTN. Certainly not a good way to start. In association with Fidelity Insurance. Certainly not a good way to start the week for those officials, but that story does bring us to our big queue tonight. We're asking you whether you approve of the government's methods in cracking down on illicit brews. Do you approve of the government's methods in cracking down illicit brews? Go ahead and share your thoughts with us this evening, and you can do that by tweeting us at KTN News KE and at Kachungira, or you can send an SMS to 22155. When you do that, do start with a yes or no so we can compile your thoughts into a poll result for later our dna matches our new attitude to make positive change to your lives with everything we do welcome to fidelity insurance insurance you can trust well, tonight, as we continue this discussion on illicit brew and how the government is handling the situation, we speak to Ferdinand Waititu, Kabeta MP. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Now, you're in the middle of some of this controversy, actually. In fact, you've been uh, sued by the Association of Spirit Manufacturers. Uh, they say that uh, this crackdown amounted to lawlessness. So let's start with, th with the beginning of this. Why did you feel it was necessary to take 200 young people and uh, engage in this activity of cracking down on the bars by yourselves? Yeah, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, those people in Kabete who together with me decided that enough is enough and we had to take action. From the time that I was elected two months ago, we had buried six youths in Kabet due to consumption of those illicit blows. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we had no other way of solving that problem. We no, have been, no we other had, way? We had, we had tried to, to, to talk to, uh, to the police, to the, to the chiefs, mm -hmm. even the, the, the area DC. To do, to do something about them, and it, 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 it was impossible. What everybody needs to realize is that this is a problem that has been there for a long time, and it, 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 it is in public domain that so many youths have died out of this illicit proofs. That's true. And the people and are so frustrated it's very that true. they didn't no know that they didn't know what to do. And what we did is actually is an act of frustration. But isn't what, it, what even we though need, it's an act of what, what, what we isn't need it against the law to destroy well, Let property? me tell you, wh wh why we fail in some cases is that uh, we need to solve a problem. Whatever the case is, a problem must be solved. But we cannot continue buying you solve it outside of the law? Uh, yeah, but uh, what I'm telling you is that we cannot, first and foremost, buying youths because of a poison, a poisonous bruise. Is, is that that in itself is, 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 is not right. Nobody can say that they are not breaking the law. They are not supposed to sell poisonous brews. Nobody has any license to sell something that is poisonous to others. Therefore, in ourselves, we decided that enough was enough. This was something that cannot, cannot, be, cannot be entertained by anybody. And we decided to take action. All right. And what what we want the bluers to, 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 to realize is that they, they, they have enjoyed too much money out of, out of bad work. So are this you, are you certain work. that yes. all of the brewers that you targeted yes. were illicit brewers? Are there no, not those who had licenses and who were no, legally no, but conducting the, business? Our concern was that the people who were dying mm -hmm. were getting the blues from these shops from these uh, wines and spirit shops. And they are the ones we targeted. We had no other way. 
we had to destroy those those uh, wine spirits that we know that are, are poisonous and that is exactly what we did what we need to tell the blueers is that they first and foremost take responsibility of those people who died for this time i, I in fact i i i, I just wonder they, they, there must be very new human they, they don't care that people have been dying to me it's a big surprise all right and so i find it also ignorant for some people who who are insisting on following the law there's no law that I permit. that people who are following the law are ignorant? No, no, I, I, I just wonder whether those who are insisting on, on, on following the law do not, do not care that people are dying and uh, losing a life. And, and there's no nothing one is so contesting precious, the severity nothing, of the there's problem. There's nothing so precious that, than somebody's life. And that is very true. Isn't but, it? But how are we going about solving this problem? So no, let's no, but what are, what are, what are we, for all this time, mm -hmm. you know this is not a problem that came or th th something that happened for, for two or three years or, or let's say one month. It's, it's a perennial problem. Yes, it is a problem that has been there for a very long time. And in one way or the other, sincerely speaking, if you come to Kabete now, you'll see that there's a, such a big change. All right. And Since let's, that time, let's, let's actually not talk that about that. Yes. Because um, you conducted these raids. Yes. So what do you think are, is going to be the impact of this? And what are the long-term um, effects of this raid going to be? Is this a, a solution? Yeah, to me, it's a, it's a, it will it lead to a solution. First and foremost, everybody now can see the magnitude of the problem. You can, everybody realizes that it was such a big problem that not just simple laws could control that. These brews were too much. They were being made everywhere. So what and will happen also, if every constituency also, starts also, to do what you did? Uh, as we stand now in Kabete for the last now almost, almost one week now, our youth are not taking beer. They are not taking those brews. They are sober. If you go there, you, you find some very, very good people, unlike what was happening before. And how so long do you think to this, us, this will last? According to the, if you just try to come there and see, people are so happy. And as a reader, you, read, you, you don't, don't just read people to, to darkness. You, you want be your people to be happy. Okay. To so enjoy my leadership. All right. So yes. in the long term... Uh, what in else the are you term, planning in the long term, to do to first combat and foremost, this problem? Why I'm happy that the problem now is a, is a problem that everybody recognizes that it, need, it needs a solution. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are going first and foremost now, now that there's, there are no brews. There are no those uh, illicit brews. Mm -hmm. Now the chiefs can, can, now, can now work. And you, can, you have seen already, a very big number have already been sacked. So the, the government is also now very serious on handling that situation. The police officers that we have been having in, in, in Kabete and uh, Kiabu uh, at large, we want to, to request that they be transferred. The ones that, who are, that have served there for more than one year, we want them to be transferred so that we can deal with the new people. And is this enough? Do you think that this I, will I be think, enough think, to solve the problem? I think in the wrong run. Mm -hmm. If we can change also the, 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 the licensing policy, mm. we want the license po licensing policy to, to be moved from, from the governor's office to come to the, to the, to the constituency level so that we have something called constitu uh, constituency alcohol control, control board so that any license that is given to uh, any, any, uh, any outlet must be, must be vetted properly by the local people and the the the, the 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 seller must have an agreement with the with the local people that they are going to sell some some particular plants. All right, but just before and he has I to observe the laws as 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 they are observe written. the laws. Yes, yeah, but yeah. just before I let you go, yes. um, with all of these measures, have any impact if the root cause of why people are drinking this illicit brew is not addressed? First and foremost, you, we we could not address any any any, any problem uh, when people are drunk. Now that, that now we are going to address the problem now, because uh, and the what what the is the problem? The, uh, the, the, the problem, according to me, there is there is uh, unemployment mm -hmm. is one issue, right? And uh, also uh, some sort of idleness mm -hmm. due to unemployment. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 according to me, we are going to try as much as possible to create some jobs for for the youths through 
funding them through WESO fund. And also, like now you have seen, we have NYS. NYS is also going to, to absorb some of them. Okay. So according to me, in one way or the other, the youth will start seeing some future in themselves. Okay. But the real problem has been that when they are that drunk, you cannot put them into any use. Even they themselves they are not looking for jobs, but just there. All right. Just drinking. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening and yeah. sharing your thoughts with I'm us. I'm happy. I'm happy that you also invited me. Thank you for coming. Thank Ferdinand so Waititu Kabete MP, he says that uh, his action was justified because you can't just watch people die. Well, don't forget that you can actually join this conversation, add your voice by tweeting us or texting us. Tonight, we're asking you whether you approve of the government's methods in cracking down on illicit brew. Now, let's turn our attention to to Eldoret. The crackdown spread to the suburbs and our reporter Mercy Kandir informs us that even with the expiry of the four-day operation announced by the president, the county is setting its own strategy to counter the illicit brews. The crackdown on illicit brew continued here in the North Rift in Wasingishu County. Today about 82 people were arraigned in court for being drunk and disorderly. 40 others were also arraigned in court for operating without a license. The crackdown continued within the six sub-counties of Wasingishu County. Also the interagency committee uh, here in Wasingishu County today sat on just to deliberate on the way forward to you know, continue with the crackdown. Remember, the proactive move here in Wasingishu County was influenced by the what happened last year when the deaths happened uh, as a result of adulterated alcohol in Central, then Nandi, and Wasingishu counties lost about 28 people as a result. Since Friday, there have been major crackdown, especially in the, within the CBD, Elder Town, where a lot of bars that had been operating were not operating within the stipulated hours being shut down. We talked to Armstrong Rono, who says this will continue happening even tomorrow as they keep even these bar owners on their toes in terms of having licenses and ensuring that the alcohol that they have have gone through the right procedure before they are sold to the consumer. Back to you in Nairobi. From here in Eldred, my name is Masi Kandie. Thank you for that, Mercy, and we'll get to that topic again in a little while. But meanwhile, two children burned to death in Cabanet, Baringo County, after their mother locked them in the house and went on a drinking spree. The victims were aged eight months and three years old. Kewamoy Assistant Chief Kipchumba Kiprono Said rescue, said that rescuers failed in their attempts to pull out the eight-month-old baby and his three-year-old sibling from the burning house. The children's parents were nowhere in sight at the time of the incident. <laughs> Wangea na wakazi, lakini hadi wa sasa wengi awaje, 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 awaje badilika. Such a sad story and unfortunately it's one of many uh, that we're hearing that have alcohol involved in some way. We continue to talk about that. Remember our hashtag there on your screen. Do participate in the conversation. And let's bring in Joseph Kaguthi. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening, uh, KTN viewers. Yes, now Joseph uh, Kaguthi is the chairman of the Nyumba Kumi Initiative, but you have also had uh, quite a lot of experience in provincial administration. True. And at one time you were actually um, uh, within Nakada as well, weren't you? Uh, we, we were founding the campaign you were against founding drug the abuse. Campaign, exactly. Mm. So you, you can actually speak um, quite, quite a bit into this issue. What do you make of this latest attempt to stem uh, illicit brews? over the past few days? <laughs> I, I just hope that is not uh, another kind of hit and run. A flash in the pan. Situation mm. when citizens killed by alcohol are more than those of any other threat, including Al Shabab, is not right. Mm. So I just hope it will this time be consistent and very permanent to leave a permanent feature so we stop this destruction mm -hmm. of one trade, just one trade, 
where it has become the preoccupation, entertainment, it takes you the time, you the energy, mm. you the entertainment across certain regions very badly. And therefore it has brought down development and human development right. in particular. But what do you make of the methods that have been employed? Um, I mean, um, obviously the brewers themselves are not very happy about them losing their property. Some of, you know, some of the methods that have been employed, they describe as unlawful. What do you think of these measures that have been taken? You know, you know it looks like uh, a period reached a period of war. And in a war situation, there are those uh, collateral damages. So let us move and uh, reduce the collateral damage, but let's stop the destruction of life and property. Mm -hmm. Let's stop sympathizing with those who have been destroying Kenyans because of their own pursuit of money without any care of the damage caused. When you look at a, a region like Central, Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. Uh, I slow down in talking <laughs> because I'm not allowed by my age to lose temper publicly. <laughs> but it is a very, very serious situation and I can sympathize with the frustration uh, the president ended up in. Mm -hmm. Honorable Kibaki had a similar frustration. You remember Mze Moi had a similar situation, but Honorable Moi that time, he cracked it in two laws. The Liquor Licensing Act and the uh, traditional liquor licensing act. But where we are now, mm -hmm. we are in this big confusion. Actually, it's a fallacy. A fallacy where people tend to think they have been driven, uh, even including by the media, to think that the only bad alcohol is the, the one which is uh, based on molasses and mm -hmm. those kind of things. Alcohol is alcohol, irrespective of the brand. If, for instance, those who are now being denied uh, that, that second generation alcoholic privileges. And they are now partaking the so-called good alcohols because they are, they, they are, they, they are, they are bearing the, the big titles, international titles and national titles. Alcohol is, alcohol is going to destroy those families continuously. So and in the absence of treatment and rehabilitation mm -hmm. centers. I don't know whether, uh, whether you know it very well that alcohol like any other drug of abuse, cigarette, cocaine, name it. You know, they intimidate, they corrupt, and they even kill. They destroy body organs, government organs, government systems, just like the way they do the body. So are you so saying let it be done. So are you saying this crackdown should extend to all types of alcohol, not just illicit brew? What I think we should now do, there are, there are many damages apart from that economic one. Do you know what the, the, those, uh, those alcoholics are going through. I saw on one of uh, your, your, your tele uh, scripts where a young man with his mouth open and he was just falling. That boy is going to die. You know why he'll die? With withdraw. The public health department, the minister of health, the medics, the, the Kenya Association of, uh, of, of, of doctors, I don't know what they, they call it, they are quiet when they ought to be advising government. The chief does not know the difference between methanol and nithanol. But that medic, the public health, they are the ones who are actually literally sleeping on the job. They ought for now to come and say this. Where we have destroyed all those bootleg alcoholic beverages, the ones that, that were there, mm -hmm. please now start going for, for treatment. Get hold of those people, those boys and girls, who are so much addicted to alcohol, that poison, and go help them in hospitals. They have, they have systems where they can treat them even uh, within the villages, just adding a little alcohol so they are able to walk. They cannot walk. Do you, I don't know whether, uh, invite one of uh, the medics to tell you what a withdrawal syndrome means. They, they, many will die, and they will die in the rural areas because of the withdrawal. So okay. it, is, it is a big operation, but can we get more professionals coming Involved in? Involved in, in the... Okay. The medics told me when I was, uh, when I was uh, the national coordinator for, for, for the campaign against drug abuse, before NACADA, mm -hmm. because we formed NACADA. They told me this, that the first three days, 
if you just withdraw, see, see, for instance, somebody who is addicted to cigarettes, you just withdraw the, the cigarettes just like that. You see the guy sweating. Sometimes you see him di- diarrhea. Okay. It is the same with alcohol. And let's, let's take this back now to the problem. Are we tackling the problem at the source? Is the problem the brewers? Or is the problem that um, people are using alcohol in a way that they shouldn't? Are we tackling the reason why people drink the way they do? Or are we just tackling the fact that alcohol is available? Let's do two, two, two things. Ask the question, how do we deal with this problem? And what, st- wha- what has caused us to reach this far? Let's start with the, the, the solution. Mm-hmm. The first one is, where is the source of the raw material? Corruption underlined. Mm-hmm. It is coming from, say, if it is methanol, say, the industrial alcohol from uh, agrochemical, they have not talked to remember. Mm-hmm. Then there is the molasses, this yellow stuff that you see being poured. That is the source. Sometimes the, the, the KRA does a very good job. It is exported. It's very cheap at 104 because it's for another purpose. It's exported. But it now comes through corruption through our border on tankers. Then it is the one which uh, ends up within the Mount Kenya, for instance, Mount Kenya zone. So the one, thi- the one area is dealing with the source of that, that material. And that coordinator, shame on him, in Kakamega, the one, the one, the one who, who distributes. is very sad. Now, that is one. The other one is, if we deal with that, then what do we do with the other one? The other one is, you go to the licensed bars. When we met chiefs in, uh, in Kiambu three weeks ago on training on Nyubakumi Usalama Amsingi, they told me, after, of course, quarreling them, why do you allow your people just to die? You have the crown, you have the swagger stick, and they all belong to the people in order for you to serve them. Mm-hmm. That's the way traditionally we should be able to train them. They told me, uh-uh, 80% to 90% of the alcohols that are killing our people are the ones in those licensed bars. What are we saying? Get hold of the right equipment. Go to those d- bars. And you, you point at that machine like this, it tells you this is a killer substance. Pick this killer substance, close that bar to start with, Go to where the factory of that uh, substance came from, close it. Even if it means you are jailing those people. Look this. I said alcohol is alcohol irrespective of the brand. Let's stop promoting alcohol because we think the only one, and we have, we have br- brought a fallacy in the minds of our Kenyans, that, that the only bad alcohol is the one that they see being poured. No. Okay, Let's now this control and contain it. But one more point. Who is supposed to take care of the citizens on health? Public health officers. All right, before, before and they we have continue, the law. just before we continue that point, this is interesting um, that you're talking uh, about how to deal with this problem. Let me take you back to 2005, yes? This is a, re- a report you were quoted in, and you said genuine changa must be legalized so that it can be regulated and monitored. Mm. Do you still hold that view? Yes, because that time, you remember the argument was you get changa from Uganda, mm-hmm. from Scotland, from, U- from uh, Russia, from Tanzania, Changa, bottled nicely. What business do you have uh, refusing Kenyans from uh, bottling their Changa and sell it in, the reg- uh, in, in a good system so that we stop killing our people because of the way they are? Remember, this kind of country is divided into two Changa ways. West of Rift, they support Changa and they, they, they take that Changa. You rarely get them killing their own people. Unfortunately, you have them, this river, uh, after, before you come to Kakamega, all that riverbed, and even the next one, Yala, they are all breweries, huko. But they all take that alcohol, they, b- they, p- they put it in those vehicle, white vehicles, they can't us, and they bring it to the people who just drink without checking. So you have that Changa, Waragi, Konyagi, Scottish, Nini, why should you continue doing that? We were asking that question in 2005. Okay. If, if 
the I'm sorry, I have to here. cut you short because yes. the time is, is running out. Uh, you did mention that it's not about the brand, but as we sum up, just a very simple question. Is this problem about the brewers or about the consumers? Both. <laughs> are we dealing with both? Or uh, one? Uh, currently. Currently, we are dealing with... First of all, all those who are already alcoholics, OCPD, stop pretending that you are now a good worker. Stop arresting them. They are, they are no, neither sinners nor criminals. They are simply sick. Let the public health... And uh, you remember I was almost telling you the law. The pub just Google in today. Food, Drugs and Chemical Substances Act. It stipulates the powers under Section 27. It stipulates even who are the members, where the Speaker of the National Assembly is represented by a member of Parliament. He is dead. They are allowing us to keep on beating their about the boot with the chiefs and OCPDs. Can you tell the public health to do their job? Two, they have the Public Health Act under Section 3. It is so powerful that every alcoholic beverage in the two laws, it got to be gazetted. What are we doing now? Mutilating those two powerful laws with little, little laws, amendments here and there. Mm -hmm. Parliament has a role to play in the NACADA, na that national uh, agency coordination authority. Right. It states this. Every six months, the NACADA must file a report on all the substance of abuse every six months. They have not filed one, so we wait until the president and everybody, for you to get the president of the Republic of Kenya telling the members of parliament, I now don't have a regional coordinator in a central province, which is true. It's the only province without a, national coordin uh, a regional coordinator. I don't know why they should be marginalized like that. Can you go together with the GSU and kindly help us stop the destruction of the people okay. as a security matter. So right. there you are, you have a problem mm -hmm. and let it be dealt with. And those who are involved, please carry on. You fight it the way I was told by Gatabak, you fight dictators. You fight dictators with everything and every, 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 everybody because if you don't do that, people will continue dying, women will continue demonstrating and the society is just sinking, sinking, sinking. Okay. Don't right. sympathize with those who destroy life and the economy of the nation. Well, thank you very much for sharing your views with us this evening. <laughs> thank you. Joseph Kaguthi. I hope we are not too rough <laughs> with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, this, this is a good discussion. Thank, thank you very you. much mm. for sharing your thoughts with us. He says, give it everything you've got. Well, remember to share your thoughts with us this evening. Katie and Prime will be right back. Welcome back to KTN Prime. Thank you for staying with us. Now, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission now wants the accounts of Nairobi County official Jimmy Kiamba frozen. The EACC has gone to court seeking a reversal of the orders that allowed the Nairobi chief finance officer to access his bank accounts. Kiamba has been accused of defrauding the county government of 20 million shillings. Ian Wafula reports. Still on the trail to investigate Nairobi County's Chief Finance Officer Jimmy Kiamba, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission was yet again at the corridors of justice. Through its lawyers, ESCC argued that a ruling made by Justice Msag Mbogoli two weeks ago, allowing Kiamba to access his account, had jeopardized their investigations. Kiamba had initially told the court that the freezing of his bank accounts had interrupted with his lifestyle, not being able to buy food or pay school fees for his children. Who has correspondingly, correspondingly However, by the time the court froze Kiamba's bank accounts back in November 2014, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission had already established that his basic monthly salary of 85,000 shillings did not match up to his wealth and bank transactions. More scrutiny by the commission revealed that Kiamba had transacted over 800 million shillings in his accounts. At the time, his balance was 14 million shillings in two accounts. So that um, the issue that will arise 
But that was not all. According to ESCC, Kiamba owns two machinettes in South Sea, a townhouse in Kileleshwa, four apartments in Kilimani, and eight plots of land in Muthaiga, Mavoko, Machakos. He also owns six cars. In a criminal case that prompted ESCC into the investigation, Jimmy Kiamba is accused of defrauding the Nairobi County government of 20 million shillings. Ian Ofula, KTN. And elsewhere, a Muslim cleric has been jailed for 10 years by an Akuru court for trafficking an underage girl to Lebanon for sex tourism. Sheikh Ali Samoja was convicted of selling the 17-year-old girl to a Lebanese in 2012. KTN's Kamche Menza visited the family of the victim who say that the magistrate was rather too lenient in her ruling. 12 is the year their then 15 year old daughter left Nakuru for Nairobi where she was later meant to head to Lebanon. They knew she was going for further religious studies. She was a student at Bilal Muslim Mission Center. They say Sheikh Ali Samoja was behind the trip. Kamambia kama ni hiyo nafasi ya kusoma ya ilimu siwezi kuzuia na huyu mwalimu mwenye ndio ananiambia huyu mwalimu mwenye kutenda leo. Sasa nilikuwa na ile confidence kwamba ni mwalimu pengine na ile Uislamu they knew their daughter would join Rasul Girls in Nairobi, but her sister says she never reported at Rasul Girls. Instead, she stayed at Sayyid Muqtada's house where he allegedly defiled her. Humzel Pompokea, a kumpereka kwa tishuleni, alimpereka kwa ke. Na by that time, kumbu Humzel kwa fani, hakuwa kwa ke nyumbani watu wake walikuwa hawapo. Alikuwa misafirisha familia. There was no clear communication later on, not even from the phone contact that the mother had saved, and they relied on Sheikh Ali for any updates. Two months later, they received a phone call with information that the girl had been taken ill and was not fit to travel. It is now more than 10 hours since the ruling was made. It's one of the many families in the country that have had to undergo the pain and agony of child sex tourism. For three years, this family has been seeking justice, and today's ruling, they say, has given them a bit of reprieve. For now, though, they have located their daughter to a whole new environment, as she still is withdrawn, having been terribly affected by the ordeal. <laughs> Kamche Menza, KTN, in Bondeni, Nakuru County. A very good evening and welcome to KTN Business. Time to catch up with the latest on what's been making headlines across the country. My name is Abi Agina. The shilling has touched a three and a half year low of 100 shillings to the dollar, weighed down by concerns over widening current account deficit and a stronger dollar globally. According to traders, the current account deficit, which widened by 59% in the first quarter of the year to 101.5 billion shillings, was putting the shilling under immense pressure. The weakening comes a month after the Monetary Policy Committee hiked the benchmark central bank rate from 8.5 to 10 percent in a move to curb the rapid depreciation. According to the Central Bank of Kenya data, the shilling has depreciated by 8.9 percent since the beginning of the year and as it is, it is at its weakest level since 2011. Next intro. 
The Kenya Association of Manufacturers has lauded the government for its renewed effort to support growth of the manufacturing sector. The manufacturers have many times cried foul over the same challenges, especially to do with policies that do not favor the local sector, but now say the measures adopted in the 2000 and 2016 budget are friendly to the growing sector. The high cost of doing business, existence of non-tariff barriers and unfavorable fiscal policies are very common challenges that any Kenyan manufacturer has a story to tell about. But the manufacturers now seem happy with key policies spelled out in this year's budget. The National Treasury announced that key changes would be made to promote local manufacturers, especially by increasing import duty to shield them from competition by foreign entities. Such industries include the sugar sector, where import duty was doubled to 460 US dollars per metric ton. The levy was also increased for importers of paper and paper products, metals, SIM cards, plastic tubes for packing toothpaste, aluminium milk cans and gas cylinders. 70% of those issues were addressed, which is very important for industry. We have achieved quite a bit in, in, in the last budget, almost everything that the manufacturing sector recommended in terms of policy change and tariff, particularly tariff change, has been implemented. While enjoying the protectionist measures, the manufacturers now want to improve their participation in the East African community market. The market offers them about 150 million potential consumers. However, Article 25 of the EAC Customs Union Protocol limits export to the region by a single manufacturer to 20% of its annual production. We need this issue under the Customs Union to be addressed. However, we are grateful to the government because the new rules of origin are now in place. According to the Ministry of Industrialization, the government is actively engaged in working some of these restrictive policies. Some of the things in the offing include the Special Economic Zones Bill, which is in Parliament. The purpose of that bill is to really enable people to participate in manufacturing in you know, a place or places that have good infrastructure, but without the restriction that we have today at EPZ. Charles Kitonga, KTN Business. Indeed, some good news there for manufacturers. The Parliamentary Committee on Transport has called for a fresh audit into the Kenya Airport Authority bus scandal. The legislature poked holes into the project, arguing the leasing costs were exorbitant way above market rates. Transport Committee Chairman Minor Commander indicated that the pricing and procurement of the buses at 11 million shillings was questionable, adding that the committee will be summoning the firm C acting CEO to shed more light into the matter. Here is more. Early morning and it's business unusual at the Kenya Airport Authority grounds. A delegation of members of parliament of the transport committee are on a fact-finding mission into the alleged multi-million shilling bus hire scam that has become all the talk. The visit saw the MPs sample the five buses in question from the finishing of the buses to the interiors. What we want uh, to do here is to compare the prices. We were told the Aplon buses is 42 million. Kenya Airways uh, buses is 22 million. Uh, it's almost a difference of 20 million. They will also ascertain, mm. come with a qualified person to be able to mm. look at the specifications. The probe into the dealing surrounding the bus tender has since seen six high-ranking officers at the authority either fired or suspended. President Uhuru Kenyatta opened the lead on the scandal when he officiated the opening of Terminal 2 at JKIA. I find it impossible to believe and to understand that you can say you have buses here, you're paying 10 million shillings, you do 11 million shillings a month for five buses. Jamani is you could mimi ni kupati a bus here NYS at 100,000. Yeah? And ilazima tutatafuta wale mechanical engineers na wale watu ambao wanahusika na mambo ya engine ya mangari tuweze kujua kwanza tujue mangari haya kama ni, ni mapya inaweza kuwa saingine ni recordation uwezi ukajua ndiyo tuweze kujua mamba haya yote 
The five buses in question are said to have been hired at an inflated fee, with KAA paying as much as 11 million shillings per month for each one of them. We want to exactly know why, or why that difference. For now, the buses remain grounded at the KAA offices until investigations are concluded. The contractor of the buses is yet to file a court case over the matter following the recent developments. Of course, that story will continue developing. Tomorrow, the committee will actually be hearing from the acting CEO. We'll see how that goes. Moving on, diaspora remittance remains a key source of foreign exchange inflow into the country. But as regulated as the sector is, an estimated 8 billion shillings annually cannot be accounted for from formal channels. This is casting a light into the world of money remittance providers who in April saw 13 providers have their licenses suspended over ties with terror group Al-Shabaab. And as Philip Kitani reports, players now want the government to crack down on those unofficially operating remittance businesses. Take a look. In April, the government suspended licenses of 13 MRPs for what it said were terrorism-related activities that providers engaged in. Unfortunately, some legitimate money remittance providers might have been caught up in the swoop. And according to the chairman of the Kenya Forex and Remittance Association, Anthony Washira, the situation is more complex than what the government was after. I know of people who were in hospitals who expected to have payments for the medical conditions to be sorted out in hospitals. They expected the funds to come through some of these money remittance providers, but it was not possible. The challenge with the sector has been the springing up of unlicensed operators working in the grey with no way to trace where the money was coming or going to. The government retains the right to have questions over any industry. But I think an, a stakeholders meeting to discuss some of those things is, is the preferred way. Kendi insists that the wrongful association of their business with terrorist-related activities has caused them huge losses. They are now asking the government to help them polish their image. They will also like the government to offer them some kind of tax concession to compensate for their losses. Big things which can happen in Africa today is for governments and regulatory authorities to hasten the regulatory framework. Every year, Somalis from around the world send approximately $1.3 billion to Somalia to support families and friends. These represent 24 to 45% of the country's GDP and more than annual humanitarian aid, development aid, and foreign direct investment combined. Philip Keitan, KTN Business. And that's all the time we had for here on KTN Business. Do join me tomorrow for a comprehensive business bulletin. My name is Abi Agina. Have yourself a good night. Time for some sporting action now. Kenya may be famous for its football exports to different leagues all over the world as well as athletics exports to some oil-rich countries. However, Kabaddi, a less familiar export amongst Kenyans, is actually catching up with the major sports in terms of exports. In fact, three Kabaddi players from the country will this season be turning up for various teams in the Indian Pro Kabaddi League. 
Despite not commanding as much following as sports like rugby, football, volleyball and athletics, Kabaddi slowly but surely spreading its wings in the country. The sport was introduced into the country just a few years ago but has already attracted a large number of interested players from across the country. To some of the Kabaddi players, the sport is already bearing fruits. Simon Kabura is among players who are enjoying the sweet fruits of their labor and self-belief. Kibura was the first Kenyan to play in the Indian Pro Kabaddi League after he signed a contract with Indian Sai Puneri Paltan last year. The Indian government or the International Kabaddi Federation believe that in Kenya we have good players who can really merge with this game. His superb display in the Indian League last season has prompted the Indian teams to have their scouts hunt the best of the best in Kenya, with two more players already set to join the Indian League this season. <laughs> Born in a footballing family, David Silisi is ready to start a new life in India where he has signed a contract with an Indian pro Kabaddi outfit, the partner Pirates, who finished third in the league last season. They were number three in their league. So when I, they saw my videos when we were playing local tournaments up here in Kenya, they were amazed with my fitness, my height and my everything. So I'm happy to join them too. Silisi is all aware that a lot will be expected of him as his new team targets to back the Pro Kabaddi League title this season. And they are believing in me that if they include me in their team, something good may come out and may, we, we may take the league. So, you know, as I have the various couple of our local players there, I want to challenge them. So I want to be the best stopper in the league. Mm -hmm. And they believe they have taken the best stopper in, in the national team. Zumo Diambo is also Indian bound where he will join Puneri Paltan as the second Kenyan player to turn up for the outfit that's targeting a top place finish. The Indian Pro Kabaddi League kicks off this weekend. Lin Washira, KTN Sports. Well, from that growing sport, let's talk about football. The Kenya Premier League that has been under scrutiny lately following the national soccer team Harambe Stars' dismal show in the Chan Championships in the hands of Ethiopia will resume on Tuesday. There will be a single match on Tuesday with Chemelil Sugar taking on Sofa Paka at the Afraha Stadium in Nakuru County. Seven matches will be on the cards on Wednesday. League strugglers Nakuru All-Stars face off with fellow Minnows City Stars. Moroni Youth square it out with Sony Sugar, while Western Steamer has a date with Madari United in their backyard. Coastal side Bandari have a tough match against Ushuru at their Mombasa Stadium grounds. AFC Leopards tackle bankers KCB at the Nyayo Stadium. League defending champions Gomahia face off with Thika United at the City Stadium. Now, in women in Nyeri County have been up in arms over their youth, over indulgence in alcohol. The situation is so grave that it caught the president's ear, and with brewing dens being a target, youth have begun to look for alternative mean means of spending their free time. Some are now embracing sports to fight the rampant drug abuse and alcoholism in the region. These are the sights and sounds of Nyeri County that have left tongues wagging. The situation is so dire that women are demonstrating all over central region to fight the rampant drug abuse and alcoholism in the region. The youths have been hard hit and more leaders now believe for the vice to be completely eradicated, there is need to come up with alternative means for the youths to spend their free time. Do to Nataka to Ato Kule, Walikua Mekua Mauko, Mapobe, Madawa Kule, Lakini Leo, to now to me on a Badiko. Sports has been identified as one of the forums that could be used to ensure the youths are engaged. Already, the youths have formed sports teams in the area. However, sponsors want the sports bill to be amended afresh because they feel it is largely administrative at the moment. They want the funds from CDF KT directed to the youths through sports and rehabilitation of the available sporting facilities. <laughs> wanaweza kuwa kikuja hapa wengi pesa zile wanapata wasipeleke kwa pombe tunakuja tuanzishe tu, tuanzishe chama hapa zinaweza saidiana they hope such sporting ventures can be replicated in other countries since alcoholism is quickly becoming a national disaster vijana sana sana wanakunywa pombe sababu wamekosa pa hali ya recreation tulikuja hapa tumeweza kuwanunulia net tumewasetia this volleyball pitch tumeweza kuwanunulia mipira they also want the county government to set up rehabilitation centers.
Well, let's take you back to our big question, our point of interaction with you this evening. As we wrap up the program, we asked you whether you approve of the government's methods in cracking down on illicit brews. And the poll results are in 51% say yes, you do. 49% say no. So it's a very very close one there, almost too close to call. But um, let's take a look at some of your feedback, some SMSs here. This one says, yes, it is quite okay to do this. My area leader has phone numbers for the brewers and is the first to alert them in case of a crackdown. He's their first customer. There's a no here. You say the crackdown was shameful and people took advantage to loot and destroy property in the name of the law. The government and leaders should be investigated and target specific shops and distributors in a humane way we've just become a barbaric society it's such a pity and no in agreement with that you say it's primitive the best way would have been to find out who are the brewers that produce these illicit brews and go after them instead of targeting retailers willy-nilly these brewers will just resume production once the euphoria subsides and on the other side of the coin there's a yes here you say the deadly spirits and wines must be destroyed The people should not loot and destroy property. Of course, this conversation continues online. Our hashtag is Illicit Brew Raids. You can go ahead and uh, see what people are saying and add your voice to that conversation. But thank you so much for being a part of the bulletin tonight and for participating. Marisha Owiti was our sign language interpreter.